Morning. Welcome to the March meeting of the Iowa State Schools Board of Education. Uh, we're excited to have all of you here tonight and look forward to presentations of some awards and uh, other recognitions of honors, winners. Uh, we generally begin our meeting with a moment of silence and I will ask if each one of you will bow with me as we begin our meeting, uh, meditating in your own way about the business that we have before of us, keep in mind the uh, interest of the students in our district. So if you will, let's bow. Thank you. Before we have our Pledge of Allegiance, let me uh, introduce our ROTC from North Iowa High School is the uh, color guard uh, serving tonight. Uh, and we have the Pledge of Allegiance to be led by the East Elementary Mentor Group. So I'll ask if the East Elementary Group wants to come forward and be ready for the pledge as the color guard comes forward. Let's everyone stand, please. Thank you, Miss Eve. Mr. Johnson, before we begin our agenda, I'll ask if you have any adjustments. Uh, yes, sir, Dr. Cash. If you'll look on your agenda at item B, uh, you'll find at your place uh, uh, a new worksheet that shows you the meeting dates for the uh, Board of Education and the Cal, and we'd like for you to replace that uh, in your in your board packet. And then down on letter H, uh, the calendar updates. We had uh, you see a strike through uh, through that, but we would like to put that back on the agenda and ask for a vote on that tonight. Okay. So we have the item H. They had previously been struck from the agenda is placed back on the agenda as a voting item. Correct. Okay, let's begin then with our, Mr. excuse Chair, me. Um, I would like to consider um, tabling the uh, personnel report until after we have our closed session. Uh, is there a second? Is that <clears throat> second, Mr. Chairman? Okay, I have a motion and a second to table the consent agenda, or actually the personnel portion of the consent agenda until after the meeting. Um, any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. So. Dr. Cash, uh, additionally, I think this applies to all of the policies beginning with I through 
C. Uh, there said second reading, and I think that they were considered at a Cal meeting, but the policy uh, 2420, at least as it's written now, requires that it be actually introduced uh, at one board meeting and then following. We were trying to save some time by doing it that way, but I think the policy the way it is now would require it to be presented at a first reading uh, at a regular board meeting and then the second reading at another board meeting. So I think those should probably be uh, changed to first readings and, and I, um, I didn't have a chance to uh, say anything to Mr. Armstrong, but I spoke briefly with Dr. Lassane and Dr. Taylor about that. Okay, so. Uh, Would that be, wouldn't that be all of those ladies? Yeah. Right. So to conform to policy, uh, we need then to make items I through Z first readings. Were V through Z already read, or did they come up at a previous board meeting? Yes, sir. Okay. So these would be a first. So clarification again, uh, Mr. Cute. Yeah, clarification is that I through U are first reading, and that V through Z are second reading as as recorded. Okay. So I through U will be first readings, V through Z will be second readings and voting items then. That's correct. Okay, well, let's move on then to, uh, for those following the agenda with us, move on to Roman numeral two. Uh, for the approval of minutes from the February 1st meeting, uh, which is Committee of the Whole, and February 8th, the Board of Education meeting minutes. Uh, if there are no additions or corrections to minutes, I'll entertain a motion that we approve those two sets of minutes. So moved. Have a motion, is there a second? Second, second Mr. Chairman. Excuse me. Motion and a second uh, by Ms. Bonham. Uh, any discussion? Not all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. So let's move on into our recognition portion of the meeting then. We have the Community Schools Award, uh, Ms. Susie Weiberg. Thank you, Dr. Cash. Um, I would like to ask if Ms. Ryan and Mr. Wellman and their students from East Elementary School could come up. And I'm hoping that Mr. and Mrs. Hollyfield are in the audience. They are. I am so glad. It's going to take me a minute because I have to do a little prefacing, so bear with me. So everyone knows the road that young people travel can be very rough. And part of all of our work is to help guide young people on their rough roads, not only through academics, but also how to play well with others how to treat people with respect, and how to be leaders. East Elementary School does a fine job with all of those things. Principal Amy Ryan came up with an idea for a student mentor program. Mrs. Ryan noted that there were young men within the school setting that were in need of a chance to participate in a group focusing on the development and growth of social skills, learning from others' experiences, dealing with uncomfortable feelings, and resolving conflicts in an appropriate manner. Mrs. Ryan noted that many children seem to have natural helping abilities to build on, but there are necessary social skills that all children can improve upon. Would you gentlemen mind holding this so people can see it? Awkward, thank you. The student mentor group focuses on traits of a peer mentor that includes setting goals, using effective problem-solving strategies, developing self-control skills, and being responsible for the development of positive relationships within the school and classroom settings. The next step was for these students to work with other students in the school setting to help them develop and grow these same skills while displaying them not only at school but throughout their daily lives. So the students that are a part of this program have chosen to wear white shirts and ties when going into classrooms to support others or while supporting the school at school functions or escorting parents throughout the school on scheduled visiting tours. 
Now, we all know what an elementary young man can do to a long sleeve dress shirt and a tie. <coughs> well, to the rescue came Helen and Lee uh, Hollyfield, owners of Jenkins Cleaners on Front Street. Jenkins Cleaners has supported East Elementary by cleaning and pressing the shirts and ties of these young men. <coughs> Helen and Lee uh, are here with us tonight, and I hope you will please come forward. Um, they're going to be recognized for their partnership with East Elementary and helping us achieve our goal of turning these young boys into responsible and very well-dressed young men. Now, the students also brought you a gift. Um, that was sort of a surprise today. So we have a whole lot of stuff up here. And I'd like to get everybody in a picture together because what you guys did was, I know it seems like it's just something small, but it is not to us. And certainly not to them, nor the parents who have to take care of these shirts. <laughs> so maybe if I can get you guys to maybe put that this team over here just a little bit, if I can get everybody in here, Mr. Bowman, take your list, Mr. Bowman. And let's try to arrange this so I can get everybody in. Thank you so much. Next, we have our district spelling bee winner and runner-up, uh, Ms. Kelly Henson. Good evening. Tonight, we'd like to recognize our students that were the winners and runners-up for the district spelling bee. The Idaho State School School's district spelling bee was held February the 4th, 2016 at McGray Auditorium on the campus of Statesville High School. The B lasted 29 rounds, with only the final two spellers remaining in the final 11 rounds. The winner will advance to the regional level of competition held at the Milton Road Center in Winston-Salem, North Carolina on March 20, 2016. If for some reason the winner cannot attend, the ISS District Spelling Bee runner-up would attend the competition. I would like to recognize the following students who placed first and second at the Idol Statesville Schools District Spelling Bee competition. Runner-up, Olivia Wall, Harmony Elementary School, and the winner, Anshuman Gupta, Mount Morn School. Mr. Johnson, if you'd like to come forward and congratulate them. Are they here?
Next, we have our district science fair winners, uh, Ms. Henson. Winning science fair projects from ISS district science fairs advanced to the Northwestern Regional Science Fair at Appalachian State University in Boone, North Carolina on December the 15th, 2015. Seven of the Idle Statesville School's elementary science fair projects received honorable mention at the Northwest Regional Science Fair. Tonight, I would like to congratulate those students. Erica Brinskel, Sharon Elementary, Malachi Davilia Hernandez, East Idle Elementary, Aaliyah Cruz, East Idle Elementary, Jackson McLean, Troutman Elementary, Dexton Howe Davis, Lake Norman Elementary, Lauren Lynch, Sharon Elementary, Zachary Cook, Woodland Heights Elementary, and Ada Saki, Woodland Heights Elementary. If those students would come forward. Mr. Johnson. Two elementary projects from ISS were selected to advance to the North Carolina Science and Engineering Fair at Meredith College on April the 1st and 2nd, 2016. Congratulations to C.J. Martino, Woodland Heights Elementary, and James Brandt, Cool Spring Elementary. Mr. Johnson, if you just want to stay down here. <laughs> Junior division projects were entered in one of six categories with awards given for first, second, and third place and honorable mention in each category. First and second place winners will advance to the state competition at Meredith College. Congratulations to Shantika Ramsing, third place, Mount Morn School. Margaret Gorley, first place, Mount Morn School. Madison Hecker, third place, Briley Middle. Emily Moore, second place, Mount Morn School. Alan Spywalk, second place, Mount Morn School, Cassidy Brandt, first place, Northview School, Nathan Claiborne, second place, Brawley Middle, Jack Baldwin, third place, Brawley Middle.
And finally, in the senior division, ISS has one project moving forward to the state competition at Meredith College on April the 1st and 2nd, 2016. This project is in biological science. Congratulations to Devanye Samal and Siddharth Samal, second place Lake Norman High School. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hanson. Next, we have the uh, superintendent's art show winners for the Midland High School. Ms. Wahlberg. Well, every year, in conjunction with high school and middle school honors chorus concerts, the winning entries from the superintendent's art contest are displayed. But this year, the, the pieces were judged, all the pieces were judged by the director of Iredell Museums, Melinda Herzog. She asked me to never again ask her to do this, <laughs> but she is very encouraged for long-term sustainability for art galleries because we have some amazingly talented students guided by some amazingly talented teachers. Um, so I have the list of this year's winners, and since they know who they are, and I know we have at least one art teacher here, um, I would like for, when I do the high school, uh, Ms. Fox, I would like for you to come up also. So for first place, Marissa Piccanini from Lake Norman. Second place, Nal Kaninko from Lake Norman. Third place, Max O'Connor from Lake Norman. That's our first, second, and third. And our honorable mentions, Lucas Yates from Lake Norman, Jacob Merrick from South, Rachel Simon from Lake Norman, Ashley Valdez from Statesville, Kirsten Clancy, Lake Norman, Molly Clark from South, and Gianna Dana from South. So we have now is here, and Mr. Johnson, there are the high school certificates are there. middle school winners. Do we have any middle school art teachers? We have a middle school. Yay! Yay! Okay. Uh, first place, Skylar Glenn from, uh, yes, from Lakeshore Middle. <laughs> Second place, uh, Jordan Calusag from Brawley. Third place is David Willis from Lakeshore Middle. And our honorable mentions, Walker Weatherford from Brawley. Reagan Dixon from North Middle, Madison Barnett from West Middle, Rachel Nicholson, Brawley, Casey Brotherton, Lakeshore, Aiden Brown, Lakeshore, and Davion Mathis, West. Yay.
that concludes our recognition portion of the meeting and it appears that we're losing a lot of our audience, but again, congratulations <laughs> to all of you all. Uh, a lot of hard work. We're glad you took some time to come and let us recognize you. As they're leaving, uh, let's go ahead and begin our non-consent agenda. Uh, we have the report out of the Outer Statesville Schools and the Foreign Exchange Program. Uh, Ms. Cute and Mr. Jimmy Elliott. Board members, thank you for letting us uh, come out and tell you just a little bit about the exchange program. On January the 24th through the 26th, we had 153 Chinese students, 10 teachers from China, and then also 10 chaperones to show up down at Katz, which was a perfect place to bring them in. If you remember those dates, that's when the snowstorm hit, and it was just, we were very fortunate to be able to come into Katz, bring those students inside to be able to meet those host, student, uh, host families there. We had 84 different host families throughout Iredell County that hosted these 153 uh, students and teachers. We had 91 that were eligible at the end. There at the very end, we had um, a f quite a few people who uh, really wanted to come on board, but we simply ran out of students. And uh, it was good to have those extras and to know that people were still interested in being host families. Um, those students um, then went to our, all of our seven high schools. They also went to four of the middle schools, uh, including CCTL and VPAC. If y'all remember those days too, we were out of school for snow, so our host families got to really get to know those host students for two days before they went to school on Wednesday. And when they went, um, that's when our schools took over, and uh, folks, you would be very proud of what your high schools and middle schools did. Our students, we had well over 200 students from uh, high schools and middle schools who were, the, were called a shadow student. And they basically helped those students around each and every day, and they became very familiar with those uh, Chinese students as they come in and then also helped uh, the teachers, but uh, 200 students from Iredell County uh, got to know uh, students from China and they also, the things we keep hearing is the cultural exchange that went on was both ways. Uh, our students learned quite a bit from them, but they also learned quite a bit from us too. Um, our school, our high schools were very hospitable in that they let them come in and in any activities that was going on at night, those uh, Chinese students and their host families were able to get into those events free. It was right there at the end of basketball season, and of course North Ireland was doing real well uh, in basketball, so uh, we did quite, have quite a few students uh, from China who did go to basketball games and different events too, uh, whether it be uh, theater events or anything else going on in our high schools. They were able to visit those, and uh, those host families uh, went with them. Uh, to let you know though too, we had 21 host families that would, had no children in Iredell Statesville schools. So I want you to start noticing how the community started coming back to Iredell <coughs> County schools, seeing what was going on. Um, so that was very important. We also had multiple churches, as many as 10 or 12, who helped uh, feed students. They helped find, find housing for students. So we, I couldn't get over the amount of people that came in from the community to help us um, host these uh, Chinese students and teachers while they were here, and, and we're very uh, glad to do that. Um, they they love the experience. Um, those uh, host families were compensated whenever they were here. That is something different that TBI does that you don't hear a lot from other companies. So uh, I was very thankful because they took them wherever they could. Uh, they went to the pit down in uh, Mooresville. Uh, they uh, went to Hornets games. They went to Carolina games. I'm glad they got to see a good team play. And I uh, didn't take them to any Duke games that I know of. Sorry about that, Max, but you, you, know, you have to say that. But uh, they did take them all over uh, in places here in Iredell County and then also in North Carolina. Um, our New Year's, uh, the Chinese New Year event took place on February the 6th, and that was at Statesville um, High School. And you have probably 700 people or more that came in. We did see quite a uh, few of uh, you folks there that night. I was very thankful that you were there to experience that. But I hope you got to see how uh, important it was for the community to see what was going on and learn from them. And uh, our own Jennifer McLean was an MC, um, and she did a great job along with the host from China. 1.2 billion people got to see the name of Iredell Statesville Schools because that was streamed over in China. And uh, they interviewed uh, a few parents and host families uh, that night. 
and they were celebrities for 1.2 billion people for well over five minutes in the news. So I thought that was great to get our state for schools some exposure there. We also had a Valentine dance down at Cats. Again, the very um, it was a good place to have that. Uh, you know, the Chinese folks were a little con concerned about if their their children would dance. Well, they did the YMCA and they did everything else, and it was good to see American kids and and Chinese students. Uh, get out there and dance and just had a good time. It was a good social. Uh, cookies were provided by the, the culinary class down at Cats. So there were many different areas from our social schools that come in and, while we were hosting those students here. Um, we did take information that we got from surveys. Uh, we surveyed host families, students, teachers, and we did learn a lot. There was a sharp learning curve uh, for those three weeks and for this whole program. Uh, we hope that this will continue and uh, we're able to put some practices in in the future that will make this even better. But folks, I, I just hope that you will see how much of the community helped in this whole endeavor and how much they got to see what was going on in Iowa State Schools. I'll turn it over to Ms. Coutte. And how much more can I add? Except I would like to share with you a comment from a student uh, from China and his shadow partner. Um, Michael was one of everybody's favorites because Michael just was one of those personalities that goes out and gets it. And if you read the interview in the paper, he is one of the uh, students who did go to North Iredale, and he was asked what were some of his favorite first. And he said number one was he got dehydrated on the plane and had to ride an ambulance to the hospital. And I'm thinking, oh, let's think of something a little bit different. Then he said, but his most favorite thing was to lay on the grass and look at the stars. Because in Beijing, you cannot see stars and you do not have uh, grass. His second thing was that he loved cheer wine, soda with some uh, pep to it, but no wine. He thought that was great. His shadow partner was a girl I happen to know, and I won't divulge her name, but when I read it, it made me real proud of my former Union Grove kid. But she said that Michael was exceptionally smart. On his first AP calculus test, he made 100. Okay, it's a pretty smart kid. But she said, but then he could joke. He tried to teach her to write her name in Chinese. He was open to everything. And she said, but what I learned most is that as different as our backgrounds were, teenagers from all over the world are still the same, which kind of gave me goosebumps as a counselor. Um, 14 parents of students who came also um, took the journey from Beijing to Iredell Statesville Schools. They stayed for 10 days, and it was one of my responsibilities to plan field trips every day. So they became my chicks, and I counted 14. I can't tell you how many times. But we went to Wake Forest. We went to Old Salem. We went to the schools, and they were amazed at our schools. They could not believe that students were given the freedom to choose some of their classes, to go into a library and choose their own book to read. Um, they were just totally amazed. They were also amazed that every student, despite their disability, is allowed a free and appropriate education. When we got back on the bus, they had many questions about special needs kids that they saw. And I saw many parents tear up because thinking of students, I'm sure, from China who are not allowed that same opportunity. The parents not only did that, but our city arranged a government day um, because over there, the citizen is not very important. Um, they asked many questions. We were finally kicked out of City Hall because they would have kept on asking questions. But then we went to the fire station. They climbed up in the engines. They put on the suits. They just totally enjoyed it. We had a Super Bowl party. They had never seen a football game. By the end, despite the results, they were all dab dabbing like um, our man. But anyway, Mr. and Elliot and I, as of April the 1st, will both be Tower Bridge employees. We will both be on their payroll. They are also hiring a young lady named Vivian Sung, who is just graduating from the University of Maryland, who we've had the opportunity to work with to be a student advisor. They plan to send 40 to 50 students for the whole year. Our school system will be compensated for them being here in our um, 
in our schools. Mr. Elliott and I are also going on the TBI payroll to go to Beijing next week for two weeks to learn about the Tower Bridge program from their perspective. One of the things I'm most interested in is that some of the people from California who've been having this program for the last three years will be there. So hopefully we can learn some lessons from them as well as get the opportunity to see a part of the world that I've never experienced. Um, to make this happen, we all have to be willing to take risk. And we do thank you for your support of this risk-taking adventure. And as our new adopted motto, stand tall, see far, we hope we can count on your continued support. Thank you. I'd like to make a comment that it was one of the most exciting events I've seen in the school system. Uh, I was got to go to several events, including unloading the buses at CATS, and I, that kind of reminded me of herding, herding CATS. So, uh, but the, to watch the, the young people mixed together and all just in, by the time you had the Valentine's Day dance, it was just amazing how they'd come out from their shells from that first day. Uh, and I talked to a lot of the parents, and, and I was amazed at the number of parents that uh, hosted these children that did not have children in our school, including one uh, couple I talked to that children go to private school, and they hosted these. And they were, uh, their comments about our school system, they were just amazed. So I, I, it, it was really a, an event that transcended uh, not only the cultures, but the people. And, and it made it so real to me to see the way these children reacted. And, and I, too, like to thank the school board for supporting this. And uh, I, I, it was one of the best best things I think we've done in a long time for our, for our children. I look forward to bringing the kids over for a whole year. I think it'll just be a great experience for not just them, but also for us. Thank you. Any other comments? And on behalf of the board, thank you, too, for the work that you've done to help make this program successful. And thank you for taking your time to come tonight to, to give us a presentation. Uh, we appreciate it. Let's move next to uh, item B, which is the Board of Education meeting dates for 2016-17. Uh, this is a voting item. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Uh, Dr. Cash and members of the board, this is the... Uh, amended calendar that was presented to you last week at your committee of the whole and so if you'll notice on july the 11th that is a combined uh, cal and board meeting uh, to accommodate the uh, fourth of july holiday and then on september the 6th um, that's a tuesday meeting which is rare for us and that accommodates the labor day holiday be glad to answer any questions you might have about your proposed calendar for next school year. Mr. Johnson, I have a question. I don't know if it's working or not, but anyway, I have a question uh, and a comment. Earlier when we made some changes in our schedule last year for this, this year, we, we looked at a couple things. One was trying to have some of our uh, closed session prior to the meeting in order to answer questions on personnel that were in our personnel report so we wouldn't have to, just like we're having to do today, put the personnel report off yes. till later. Uh, I actually thought that worked well. We also uh, wanted to have a common start time for our public meetings and have it at a time that the people from uh, the working people would be able to get there. And I th that was the main reason we wanted to move the start of the cow meeting to 6 o'clock. And I thought that also was successful. Uh, my, I would like to make a suggestion that we consider going on and starting the uh, closed session for our cow meeting at 5 o'clock and include the meal in that session so we would go from 5 to whenever we would have 5.45, whatever we needed. But let's, I'd like to get the meal over with. Uh, that way the staff, and I know they get off at 5, so they could just come right in. 
Uh, I think it's very interrupting in our meetings. It interrupts us a lot when we have uh, 45 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes at 7, 7, 15 for our meal. I think this could allow us to continue to uh, do things we wanted to do, which was get the, me the meeting started earlier, and but not penalize the public by starting before 6 o'clock and have a continuous both meetings starting at 6 o'clock. Uh, I'd like to put that up to my fellow board members to get their opinions. Just a point of clarification, are you saying the schedule that's before us, you're just saying make sure we eat between 5 and 5.30 the same time that it proposes to be our closed session time? Is that what you're saying? I mean, yes, still, yeah. The, just keep the same closed schedule. session time. So you're proposing the schedule that's before us would change the time to six for every one of those times, with the exception of the end work year and that stuff. For the public open meeting. That's right. Yeah. And, and then, then continue. And then the note down at the bottom, uh, start at five, five to five thirty for the closed session. Still. Yes, I no change on the BOE meeting. Just on the calendar. That way we. Would you like to make that in a motion? I'll be glad to second it. Mr. Chairman, I'll make that into a motion, please. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? I, ju I just had a question because I know there was an issue with our attorney being able to be there for the closed session items that early. How's that going to affect? That's even better. It's going to be better for you. Oh, okay. You start at 7. You start at 7, huh? We don't want to belabor all this again, and I think that's a good idea. There's no problem there. Start at five. You saying start at five o'clock, and have a meal start at five o'clock, and if there's a closed session, that's when we do it. Is that what we're saying? And then the regular meeting would start at six, and the regular meeting on the second Monday would start at six. Correct. That's correct. Could I add an amendment that we go back to real food instead of sandwiches? Good for the second. So I accept it. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? If not, I just need so. clarification. <coughs> so for the Closed session slash meal starts at five. Yes. When the cow meet the open session begins when? Six. For cow. Yes, for both of both. That way we get the same time for both. Clarification of the questions. If not all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. <laughs> uh, what's happening? <laughs> Next, we uh, have item C, the engage grant. Uh, Mr. Johnson. Yes, sir. Dr. Cash, members of the board. Um, Last year, we did apply for a grant with the U.S. Department of Education that we called ENGAGE. Um, 
Unfortunately, we did not receive that grant, but we did receive very strong feedback uh, from the grant evaluators. So we have been encouraged to resubmit that grant. Uh, as you know, we use a company called Research Associates, and they are willing to resubmit the grant for us at no cost. Uh, this grant will serve Statesville Middle School, Statesville High School, West Iredell Middle School, West Iredell High School, North Middle, and North Iredell High School. It is a $3 million grant. The work that will be done by this grant will support um, a lot of initiatives that align with student services and provide uh, not only additional staff in the schools, but will also do a lot of training uh, with staff in issues that surround uh, supporting uh, student engagement and uh, working in the area of student services. So we're just asking your permission tonight to resubmit this uh, grant for a second consideration. And of course, there is no cost uh, to the district to do this. We'll make a motion that we submit this grant, resubmit this grant at this time. Uh, we've seen these letters a lot of times. Anything we can do to help them would be greatly appreciated. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? Do we have a timetable on uh, when they would be awarded the grant? Uh, we should hear back from this before the uh, end of summer. So year one will be the end of school year? Yes, sir. Okay. Any other discussion? Not all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Yeah, motion carries. Next, we have uh, item D, the middle school baseball softball uh, proposal. Uh, this is a voting item as well, Mr. Armstrong. Yeah. Dr. Cash, members of the board, um, the Idaho State Schools is only one of a few school systems in the state that do not have. Uh, baseball and softball in our middle schools. Uh, we, we did create a task force to look at the feasibility of having a program for our district. And uh, after much discussion with the committee and with the uh, principals, athletic directors, uh, we've decided to use the 16-17 school year to prepare to roll out baseball and softball in our middle schools during the 17-18 school year. That would give us time to get facilities and uh, equipment and those type things in place, coaches, so that we can have a first class program for seventh and eighth graders in the 17, 18 school Well, year. then I have a question here as to what we're deciding, whether we're deciding that we're gonna have the programs and we're gonna have it then, or we're, we're deciding not to have the programs until you decide when you can put them on the field. No, just you're deciding whether you'll go with the plan, getting ready for getting ready next year and then rolling it out 17, 18. So we're, voting not we're asking you to support that. I'll make a motion that we accept the uh, task force recommendation and the staffs to follow the 2016-17 uh, school year to prepare and start with the students in 2017 to 18. We have a motion and a second. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, ask for a friendly amendment or just an amendment. Uh, I would like to include that this includes our direction to do this in 2017 18, that it includes the, that the providing the necessary funding and appropriate practice at each middle school campus or providing free transportation to a nearby practice facility for the seniors. Well, those are, those are questions, excuse me, but those are questions, I, I, I assume there's an out here. If we go in, if we say we want to have these baseball, softball teams in next year and the task force starts looking at it and things like he's just mentioned, the fields aren't ready, the transportation isn't ready, the coaches aren't in place, uh, they quit selling baseballs, uh, whatever. Uh, we would not do it at that time. So I'm assuming there's an out that could happen. No, we it, feel like the best situation is to, to prepare all of next, this coming school year, this fall, start preparing this fall for 17, 18. But I, I agree with Mr. Page, there could be some things that may not get done is that I what you're saying? Sure okay. I want the board to mandate that they're done. 
Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate that. To say we are going to provide the funding and we are going to provide proper facilities that are used. Okay. And transportation. Some, some of these schools may need to transport somewhere near their facility for the practice. I don't want to have to charge those schools to use the buses if they have to do that. I want the school board to say, we're going to make this happen in 2017. And that's what I'm asking for now is, is that we don't just say we want to do it. We say we are going to do it, and we will provide what we need for this to happen. But if we say we are going to provide what we need for this to happen at this time without a plan outlined, to me that's a pig and a poke. I don't know what that entails. I don't have any idea how much it could be to do that by next year. I mean, is that, I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to stand in the way of the baseball softball. I just, at this point, we're saying we're going to have the programs. But to say like this, that we will do this, we'll do that, we'll do something else, that could entail a budget item that we might not be able to handle totally. Well, we will be able to handle That's what the task force, we looked at the feasibility and what it would cost. So there is, there is cost and uh, working with facilities and planning, they can, they can do the work, but it is going to cost. And maybe I make an assumption that if they're going to plan next year, they're going to be coming back to us about this time next year saying, here where our costs are, because it's going to have to go in our budget somewhere. <laughs> so we're going to have to consider it somewhere. And whatever mm -hmm. those costs are, whether transportation, equipment, right. you know, field restoration, whatever those items are, we would know. We're just we're voting to give them the charge to move forward Correct. next year with their planning. And obviously, if they come in here and say it's going to take $10 million, we're going to vote against it. I'm just right, we're not I mean, going to say can't that. Afford it. Okay, so that, okay, so that could be an out, and I'm not looking for outs. I'm just saying I, I, I don't want a blanket plan right. and somebody come up with a plan that we're going to transport back and forth with charter buses out of wherever. I mean, I just want to know what we're planning to do before we say we're going to fund yeah, we're what we're planning to We're planning to get do. fields ready for practices and, and to play at the middle schools. Um, that's what we're planning. And also, uh, there may be some instances where some middle schools, there may not be uh, a field available. They may have to be transported somewhere else to, to play. You're talking about baseball and softball, so uh, they all can't uh, practice uh, yeah. sometimes on the same field just because of just they won't have lighting. And I don't know so. what the proper order is here. I would be glad to uh, – Accept a friendly amendment that the task force consider transportation and the items that Mr. Page just brought up, or I'll second his as a as a motion. It's up to y'all. How the would you take that? Anna, didn't you have the second? Anna had the second. Uh, would you Anna accept has that as a friendly yeah. thing that they look at that when they're when the task force is uh, uh, preparing their? State uh, it one more time. No. The, state, state the state the uh, motion and how the how it would be amended. To me. The, I'll, I'll restate as best I can. Um, English is not my favorite language. Um, the, uh, oh, yes, correct. I, I said my motion is to accept the task force recommendation and the staffs to prepare next year what it's going to take to implement this for the 2017-2018 year. And please make sure and include transportation and other costs outside of equipment and fields. And I can have that available for you all next month if you like, because we have those numbers. I can bring it to the next CAL meeting in April. And we're going to need to know that to see what impact it has to our budget. Yes, sir. Right. Yeah, so, so, sometime those numbers need to be there. That's, what, that's all I'm saying. Yes. I want to see the numbers before I say, oh, yeah, we're going to do that. I understand. So, Mr. Armstrong, are you yeah. saying you have the numbers? You have the plan? From just the, uh, just the, this is a ballpark, and that's, you know, ballparks are scary sometimes. But right now we're thinking just preparing fields, just in capital, about 150000 and just in resources, uh, buying equipment, probably another 50000 And how many schools are you? We're talking about all, all of our middle schools plus the two IB schools. So we're talking nine of our schools. And the Moors will grade it. Also, wants to, they want to be part of their Mooresville grade at middle school wants to be part of the league. Also, I thought the IB students, middle school students, went back to their feeder. No, they want their own. They they're all they're right now. They've already <coughs> like Mount Morn. They already have a cross country team, mm -hmm. 
but uh, the IB principals, have their, their plans have always been when they could to have summer teams on their campuses. So they want to be part of the baseball program, Northview and um, Mount, uh, Mount Moore. They were part of that task force and they want to uh, have their own teams, want to field their own teams. In baseball, you gotta remember that you don't, you don't have as many, so if you eliminate <coughs> schools, you're gonna eliminate students participating in baseball. So the more schools willing to have baseball teams, the more participants you would have in baseball and softball. But you're gonna eliminate students if you say you have to go and play at this school. They don't have as many chances to make a team if you cut out two teams. Let's to make sure we're in order. All right. Because uh, I'm not sure we are. Okay. Uh, uh, we'll make sure we have a second to that amended motion uh, before we have further discussion. All right. Uh, Anna, do you? So, so Charles accepted the friendly motion, and then I need to accept it as well. And I'm okay. I'm okay with what you said. If I that's made the an motion, issue. so you're accepting that you're doing the second and with that friendly. You need uh, to debate the amendment. I was going to say that's what I thought. Yeah, you make you can either vote on the amendment or by itself, or you can you can vote on the motion with a friendly amendment as one motion. And I thought that's what I was voting on. So I think that's correct. It, it, you made the you amended your motion a friendly. I mean, yeah. I guess that's what we're trying to define. Right. What that means, we didn't do a formal amended motion. He just changed the motion. If you agree, as a second, is that? I'm I'm okay with that, Charles. Are you okay with that? Surely. Okay. Then we don't need the. No. Okay, you just modified the motion before. Right. That's right. I, I'd like to clarify what my point was that I attended one of the meetings. Yes, sir. And as most things that happen in governments, uh, we have unfunded mandates. We tell people to do something, they worry. I know the principals are concerned. They're saying, well, uh, are we going to get hung? cost of this. Is that going to end up costing us at our school? Uh, I want to make sure that the principals understand that they're not going to have to pay for the field improvements and the equipment to start baseball with. That if our board is going to support this, I think we've got to say we're going to support it. Uh, I don't, they need to be assured that they're not going to come down and have to use money they make off football or money they get it. Uh, something else that's going to be used out of their budget to buy the stuff to get baseball started with. I think that's all I'm asking is a commitment from the board. If we tell them to do it, that we're going to back them and we are going to help finance it. Uh, I think it'll take some fears away from some of the middle school principals. Uh, I, I personally hope they'll try to do it this year. I can understand they're very uh, – worried about things like this and I think that was my point was trying to make sure that the principals knew we were planning on putting the bill for getting baseball and softball into these schools. Considering we're one of the very few in the state that doesn't have it, uh, I think it's very important that we include this in our uh, offerings for our students. Now is this something we do as well? Do we do the same thing for the soccer teams, the football teams? The lacrosse teams is that do i understand we don't do that for those teams martin or is this i don't know they're already existing i know i mean I do we do we provide those services you know no, transportation they, mr page is talking about just getting it off the ground correct so for how long they themselves okay. you know just getting the equipment to get them started okay so are, so are we saying until it gets off the ground we will be oh, doing I the transportation just, or just Sustain well, just to get because they need some work on the field, they're going to need some backstop. They're obviously going to need a little bit of equipment. Mm -hmm. Most of the equipment is going to be very minor, uh, right. as far as balls and that sort of stuff. Uh, but I think we've got to, uh, and then there's a transportation issue if because they're going to play at the high school, which I think is a great thing. It gives the kids to play under the lights at the, at the big school. Uh, they're also worried about having to pay transportation. We're not going to have any fields that are uh, game quality fields at our, at our middle schools. They'll be practice fields. Uh, I think Lake Shore probably has got a game quality field and 
Yeah, there were a couple, two or three. Uh, Mount Morn, Mount Morn, he actually would be able to play. Yeah, they have game, game quality field. So we're going to have to use the most. There's another interesting thing is both recreation departments, uh, the city of Statesville and our county, are back in this change and, and <coughs> have offered all their facilities to uh, the school for use free of charge, uh, you know, if, if we need any of their facilities. I just want to make sure that the principals are comfortable that we're not going to pass the buck to them on getting this program up and running. Okay, any other discussion on the motion? Uh, no other discussion, uh -huh. I, I would, um I would feel more comfortable having some figures um, in front of us about what schools and what their needs, the individual needs, and approximate cost. I can bring that in. I can bring that in April. Yes, I can. I can supply that to you. I don't know how we would do it in reference to what we're supposed to do, but at that point, I would like to separate those two motions because we don't have those figures. Like she says, well, I don't have the figures. We just we've just been looking at a budget, and if you're telling me to cost. To, to start up and what's which they need to start baseball softball is uh, $325 that's not bad but when you throw out $150,000 or maybe another 50 that runs into bucks somewhere that has to come from so you know, I, I still I can say yes okay you can go ahead and see what it takes to come up with baseball and softball for next year. I can vote on that, no problem, get it going. But to say that we're gonna fund that with an open checkbook, I don't he have any idea what that is. I don't, know, I don't know what any of that is. I know that there are some things that we have in place and other things that we do not have in place and I'll venture to guess there are a lot of things that somebody has not even thought about yet that will cost us money. I want to see what those costs are before I say we are going to openly back that program. I think the thing I want to make sure you understand, my motion is to accept the task force recommendation. And what does it say? The task force was created to look at the feasibility of offering these two programs during that year. So there, that's what I, my motion is for them to move forward, checking on the feasibility. That doesn't mean we're going to do it. That doesn't mean we're not going to do it. That means we, they've got to, their charge is to bring us back the feasibility of being able to do it. Right. It includes those numbers, includes right. transportation that maybe they hadn't addressed in these numbers, even the ones you already I, have. I'll tell you, that task force with all those, uh, they've thought of everything. I can bring you Make the sure numbers. And what I gave you was what testify. came out of, because I've been involved well, in all three of them. I think we're saying the same thing you. then. Yeah. What he's saying, what she's saying, is the same, the same that's thing not I'm what saying. The we need numbers. That's not what, what he's the saying is that he wants the numbers in with this, and I think we should separate them at mm -hmm. this time. And that's, that's not what the motion <laughs> is, though, now, Mr. Kelly. Uh, the, I understand. The, the, that's what the I'm amendment saying. Incorporated. I, don't what the, I don't understand what the protocol is. Well, the, ori the original amendment, I mean, the original motion is, I think, what you wanted. Mr. Mr. Page has gone a step beyond that, which is, in a, in a way, not to put words in your mouth, Mr. Page, but basically, what whatever it costs, we're going to get it done. Now, it's it seems to be there's some sentiment to find out what those numbers are. So you could go ahead and approve. Um, I mean, you you could do anything. You can postpone the vote till next month and just get the numbers and then then discuss it and resolve it. Or you can you know you can give them the uh, assurance that they can move forward and still bring the numbers back next time. I mean, you could you could vote to. Delay both, pro I mean, uh, work on the feasibility, implement the programs in 17, 18, subject to, you know, budgetary approval. But, I mean, right, right now the motion is, um, and I think, I don't know if Mr. Page is, it, it appears there is some, some concern on the part of all of the principals that, yeah, you'll say do it, but you find the money out of your budget. And some of them might have it, some of them might not have it. I understand that. But I can also understand the concern of the board that until you know what the numbers are, you don't want to just give a blank checkbook, I think somebody right. mentioned. So. Well, I ne it was never intended to be a blank checkbook. I thought we would just uh, tell them that we, we supported it. I'll withdraw my motion and 
we'll just move on. Well, the, the friendly amendment to that, to me, took is I, I withdraw no. my amendment. Oh, yeah, but I was asking so, I was asking you to include that in the feasibility to make sure that you were including transportation and other costs. It's all been, not. yes, all it's been. All, that's what I'm saying. So I, we, I, I was just reiterating it, not saying it was we were for it. Okay. Withdraw the motion and withdraw the second and go to the first one. Is that what we're doing? Okay. Did I second? And then you're going to bring us the numbers I'll, I'll back next month. Like yes, the motion. Yes, then we're back to the original where I just said I support what the task force recommendation was to look at the feasibility of doing this for the 2017-18 year. Didn't you second that? That, that was the very first motion. I call for the question. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Uh, uh, motion carries. Can't believe it. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> next, we have uh, an out of district attendance update, and okay. this uh, is a voting item as well. All right. Well, each year we look at uh, the pupil assignment office, we look at the number of out of district students in each of our schools, and currently there are no elementary or middle schools that are closed for out of district students, and we feel pretty confident there shouldn't be any closed this coming uh, school year for 16-17. South Iredale High School has been placed on a watch list for signing out of district students and Lake Norman High School is listed as closed and that's what we would like to go with this entire, um, uh, ask you to vote on not having any of our middle and high, our elementary or middle schools closed, but we'll have South Iredale High School on a watch list and Lake Norman considered closed for for out of um, for out of district pupils. Mr. Armstrong, I don't think about the list. I don't see Troutman Elementary listed on here. Not sure why some of them are not on there because this was the list that. Uh, it's all everybody. All twenty is twenty eight schools. We need twenty nine. The elementary schools not on there. It is not, and I'm not sure why. But it's not in, it's not in, out of compliance as far as taking any kids. No, we have we have a lot of students want to get to Troutman Elementary, so it should be on there. I'm not sure why it didn't why it's not there. And one question I should ask last week, and I just thought about it: What is the um, capacity for Lake Norman High School, and where are we now? And the same thing for South, where are we? South current capacity is listed at about 1,560. I think he is very close to that number, somewhere in the 1,530, 40 range. And that's why we consider them a watch list. We very careful. We, we will look at the leadership team when we have out of district requests. We look at those students carefully to make sure before we place them there because we know that South is fast approaching capacity. Mr. Armstrong, yes. Uh, question to Dr. Miller. Does that include the MAGA unit? It does not. However, there's many ways to look at capacity. You can look at maximum capacity, state recommended capacity, or optimum capacity. And the pressure.
have a, um, my concern is these, the numbers that we were just given, they're basically about the same. So why, why would you close Lake Norman and not close South Iredale? If you would like, it's a board, but we feel like, you know, we're basically in the same position we were last year with their attendance, and it was on a watch list last year. So we hadn't, we didn't see the need to close it because their attendance has been pretty consistent. I think. Well, I, and, and just to um, the 107 um, out-of-district students for South Iredell, that does not include the IB students. Is that correct? I'm not sure. I think I think they do, but that many. Is Probably not. You don't think? I, uh, I would say that the students that show up on your report are the kids that have legitimately filled out an application um, leaving one of our other high schools to go to South. It also includes the kids that have exited IB but wish to stay their junior and senior year. Right. Yeah, that's probably a little different. Yeah. Because you've If we, yeah, we know out that. of district. Did I say yeah, out, out of, of county? I'm sorry, I think out of district. Okay, I think you, I took it as out of district is what you were it saying. It was out of but, district. But uh, what Mr. Johnson said about students exiting that program, we've always, well, the administration has given them an opportunity to stay if they like. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess my number, the number is 107 uh, for South and then compare it to Lake Norman High, which is 27 out of district right. students. And then you've got the capacity and actual about the same for both of them. So my, my concern is, you know, why not close I just both? don't understand why you didn't recommend to close both of them. That's just my concern. Okay. Other questions or comments? I would say, um, it would be very easy for us with the availability of the classes in the uh, mega units to open up Lake Norman to a limited degree for a year and see what happened because we are getting, going to have some competition at one of the charter schools now for high school students on that end of the county. So rather than closing south, I would say if we're going to change this recommendation, I'd like to open up Lake Norman and see what happens for a year. Well, we're only talking about out of out of district students here, aren't we? We're not talking about in general. I mean, the, the growth could be at Lake Norman overnight. And it could we, be, and that's why we're being cautious. Lake, oh, well, Norman. Uh, there's more. There's just more residential construction on that end of the county right. than in Troutman. But we could make that recommendation if that should occur. Or you could say, let's put both schools on a watch list and. Taking on a case by case basis. 
Yeah, can you explain to us the difference between being closed and being on a watch list? Being closed, basically we just don't accept any applications if you're out of district. And then on the watch list, you know, if, if there's a, a, a strong enough reason to transfer a student, we would work with um, the principals of both schools and we would do what was best for that student. And I'm not saying that wouldn't happen at Lake Norman. We, you know, we're always going to look out with what's best for the student, but we basically will tell people that Lake Norman High School is closed and they don't even apply to, to go out of district to Lake Norman. But we, they will apply to go to South Ironhead, but we tell them, you know, the chances are not real high. We have to look at it real carefully. Their reasons have to be really good because everyone has to write a reason for why they want to transfer. They have to include that with their application. I trust your judgment the on reading, this. Yeah, it has to be compelling. It's tough. It's, yeah. a, it's, <laughs> a, it's a tough job, and, you know, and, uh, but the principals are excellent to work with. Uh, they look at it <laughs> case by case. We look at attendance, you know, their, their academics and discipline profiles. No other discussion. We need a motion to either accept this list or uh, with the recommendations, or we can uh, reject it with amendments, or we can just reject it and ask the administration to go back and rethink it. I would make a motion. Yeah, I would make a motion that we accept Mr. Armstrong's out of district attendance um, recommendations. Second. We have a motion and a second, uh, Mr. Kelly. Uh, any further discussion? It's, it's crowded. It, like, Lake Norman is extremely crowded when you when you speak into the administration. And I know that their classes are you know pretty large. Some of those classes are very large at Lake Norman. It's just a tough decision. We have a motion and a second. Uh, no other discussion though. Uh, ask for a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Okay. Next, we have the um, out of dis uh, see the classified pay table revisions. Uh, Dr. Lassane, Ms. Gilliam, Ms. White. Good evening. Dr. Cash, Mr. Johnson, members of the board. We discussed the classified pay table revisions last week at the Committee of the Whole meeting extensively. We've provided some additional um, written information um, for you here and are here to answer any additional questions that may be left over from that meeting. We are asking for your actual approval so that we can um, move forward with the work with other areas. I would also like to say that since the last um, meeting, just to give you an update, we um, shared with you information on specific area meetings that we would have to communicate this information to employees. We have also decided that we are gonna create a video and have that posted to allow some more um, flexibilities as well as working on a portal for employees to submit questions that they may have and we will just add that to our frequently asked questions so that we can have that as an ongoing communication tool. So as soon as we're able to get that done, that will be posted to the website and we invite you to review that information as well to keep, as the, keep up with uh, frequently asked questions that may um, provide some information um, for you. I thought this looked real good. Classified people, when they like the 
There are some in the maintenance world, but outside of that, I'll, I can't think of any readily off the top of my head. So they, are you going to ask us for a set of a certain amount to a step move this person needs to be placed here? And the well, when we look at relevant um, increases for people, they would have to be paced, placed somewhere on this table, so it would be aligned to a step on the pay table. I think but it has to have some justification. Right now, I think, and I'm not in a closed session, but I know that we talked about it in the classified review, a salary review committee, when we talk, when we get to a dollar amount, it's always based on moving them to this step and this grade. So that's already been factored in, and maybe they're just bringing to you the dollar amount. But that dollar amount is arrived based on where they would place on the new on the table. Does yeah. that make sense? And we had a little bit of this discussion. Do the supervisors have input on where their employees are placed in the pay scale? Sal setting salary is a function of human resources. And if we had every department set their own salaries, then we would probably have even more disparity than some of the things that we are trying to clean up right now. And so we always take recommendations. The supervisors have um, lots of input as far as the job description, what functions they have and all of that. They submit that. And then we do have to do comparisons we have to look at where we are on our scale. We have to compare employees across departments. And so that is a function of human resources, setting salary. Is there a process of uh, appeal on that that the supervisor feels? Well, I, every supervisor will go straight to the superintendent if they don't like anything that, <laughs> that we submit or, or anything like that. And they'll come back and we bring all of our relevant information and share our comparisons and everything that we've done. So is that a set process? No, um, but it's pretty much the nature of how things go. And that's why they have that input in the job description so that we align, we have a lot more experience in setting um, salary across the whole organization because otherwise you can have one who would recommend very, very high salaries based on whatever they derive within their department and it could be very much another director who's trying to be very frugal and then you end up with disadvantaged employees. Well, I think it needs to be a combination of both. I just want to make sure our supervisors have input in, in where their employees are placed on the uh, scale. 
Y'all did a lot of work in this, but I thought it was really, really good. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have the um, vote tonight? Yes, we need to uh, have a motion to approve if that's the board's direction. Thank Chairman, you. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah, motion carries. Thank you. Okay, we'll move uh, on to item G, the school start and end times for 2016-17. Mr. Armstrong. Thank you, Dr. Cash, members of the board, Mr. Johnson. The North Carolina Department of Public Instruction requires 180 days or 1,025 hours of instruction for all students each year. Currently, Presley students meet for five hours and 40 minutes per week. As a result, we are five hours under the required meeting times. We are currently looking at adding seven to 15 minutes per day to the school day for the 16-17 school year. If we make this change, every school will exceed our 1,025 hours requirement. So I'm coming to the board tonight to make a recommendation that we add 10 minutes to the school day at each level for the 16, 17 school year. We add it to the end of the school day to make sure we have enough time in in case of bad weather. And with the late start that we have this coming school year on August 29th, we could run into not having the required number of hours if, we, if the weather's bad. So I'm bringing a recommendation of adding 10 additional minutes to the school day at each level to the board tonight. Is that what this chart reflects? Yes, okay. seven, 10, and 15 minutes. Yeah. Uh, two, two comments. One, uh, I've been trying to figure out how we're getting two different totals on the figures, but I think it just dawned on me. Uh, are we not going 185 days now? It's 180 days. Maybe. Are we still 180 or we're 185? We did, we extend 180. 180. Mm -hmm. How many days we go or 1,025 hours? Those, those are the two, either one, you have to require to reach it. I'm just wondering why we can't add to Presley and Monticello without adding to the other schedule. Because of the, the way the, the buses are scheduled to get there. Those buses, and someone asked a question about Presley, why it takes so long. Well, a student goes to Presley, they'll leave home, and they'll actually go to a, they shuttle to a high school or their home school, and then they shuttle to Monticello and from Monticello to Presley. So those students are on the bus. If we started, um, any, we, we, we wouldn't start any earlier because they would really be on the bus a long time. Uh, in the mornings and be out uh, before daylight. And so Presley has always been our day where because it's taken so long to get students there because of the way our bus is run. So that's why Presley has always been our shortest day and we base what we do on Presley's schedule. We've already got our middle school for seven hours, come on, seven hours, 15. They, they're all for it. They like the more time together, the better. We brought it up at the principal's meeting. Anytime you have more time for instruction, who would, no one would turn that down. High schools don't feel like it's going to be a problem with uh, No, the high school, high school principals were in the meetings also. I know in Guilford County, I know it has nothing to do with this, but high schools in Guilford County started at 845, and my students didn't get out to 345. Now, you talk about nightmares with spring sports. That was a nightmare. This table is the current table, right, Mr. Armstrong? Yes, That's sir. what we'll be using. Yes, if you look at, and then you look, if you look at the 10 minutes. Right. Make a motion. We're looking at the next to last column. Yes. You're proposing. Mm -hmm. Yes, Ms. Haynes. Mm -hmm. And you're going to add it to the end of the day. The end of the day. That's the proposal. But the principals, yeah, the principals were uh, very much in favor of it. The starting end time, though, on this schedule is what we'll have, right? When we add those 10, 
Yes, that's correct. Yes, sir. Say, if you add, like Celeste Hinkle, a year from now, their dismissal time would be 225. Central would be 215. All right. Well, I move um, that we accept the recommendation by Mr. Armstrong to add 10 additional minutes uh, for next school year. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing out all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Next we have item H, the calendar update for this school year. Uh, Ms. Lauberg. Thank you. Uh, last Monday I gave you a memo regarding that fifth day that we lost due to weather and how the board would address that for our students. Um, we will be using the last, the Friday.